So this is what we've got. It's about 38 inches wide, 20 inches deep. It's got a solid glass top, so you can't see through the reflections, okay. but you get the idea. And, uh, and what we're going to do is make a votive candle holder. So this is actually made out of two different materials because nobody ever makes stuff out of two materials at a time, right? 3D printers can only do one at a time and with lasers, alignment's a real pain. But you can see I've got two pieces of material here. They're both mm -hmm. just got some white contact paper on it. Mm -hmm. This one is walnut, so it's a nice rich brown. Okay. And this is actually acrylic. This mm -hmm. is a frosted acrylic. And we're gonna make a votive candle holder mm -hmm. uh, out of walnut walls and acrylic shades. Okay. So this is Dean's handiwork. We've got this lovely, iPad interface. And have you used a laser cutter before? Um, I have not actually used one myself. I've seen one in operation and I've designed parts and then sent them to Pinoco. So that's, uh, okay. that's my... I'm so they do the pain for you. Yes. Yeah. So one of the really difficult parts is laying out your design on the material. But you can see here, we actually have a picture of the material. Like, mm -hmm. you know, there's the iPad, there's reality. Mm -hmm. And so all we have to do is just grab these things and drag them into place. So I'm gonna go put these, these acrylic shades right in the middle of the acrylic. I could, oh, okay, I didn't actually have that on my finger. Go ahead, Dean, you do it. I'll be camera guy. <laughs> so, uh, so you can put them on the acrylic, you can put it on the wood, and this actually lets you work in multiple materials at a time. So and it cool. skips over the whole like alignment step. Yeah. So Dean's getting it all set up and then, uh, Hit the, hit the magical print button. So when you hit print on there, yep, punch it. And it actually sends it up to the cloud. Did you spec the materials that, uh, for each one? Like, Ooh, Yes, good question. So it's really hard to go like profile a material and test it out iteratively and figure it out. What we're actually doing is selling materials that have invisible barcodes on them. So the machine picks it up and does all the settings automatically. God, you also have the ability so cool. to do like saved save materials and you know use a drop down if you just want to buy materials from the home depot mm -hmm. so it is on wi-fi it's sending it up to the google cloud and then back down again that's my illustration from vanna uh <laughs> it's sending it back down again to the glowforge which is also on wi-fi and is ready to go so dean punch it Boop. and as soon as you do that you see it springs to life and starts the process of making this thing Let's see if I get a good angle here. There we go. Where, is it being vented to an internal filter or is it being pushed out out of the box somewhere else? Aha, you know all the secrets. So right now it's going out a dryer hose out the window. Mm -hmm. And for 1995, that's what you do. For $500 more, we put an air filter underneath it for you that's it's not on this one mm -hmm. but it raises the whole thing up by seven inches mm -hmm. and then you don't have to deal with venting at all cool. it's a hepa filter combined with a charcoal filter that just lets you run it anywhere in the in the office oh man you guys have like put so much work into this i can't believe you've gotten this far in what like a year yeah it's been about a year and a that's half that's insane um so you can see back on the ipad it's showing a countdown to how much time is left until it's finished. And it can do that because the server is controlling everything. So you've got a UI on the iPad or on your Mac or PC or phone or whatever. And then you've actually got this running in sync. Mm -hmm. So server. so right now, that, that data you see, that the time to completion, is that being sent directly to the iPad from, from the Glowforge or is it? No, it's coming from the server. So the okay. server is both sending motion commands to the Glowforge mm -hmm. and the timing stuff to the uh, to the iPad. Okay. So if I was with you in LA, I could be driving this just as easily. That's why you have to push the button to start it because you can kick it off from anywhere. So your local makerspace can put in a sheet of wood for you. You can send it to the makerspace and then they just hit print. That's cool. Um, so. Where's the server? Is it is a cloud server? Yeah, we're using Google's cloud uh, cloud server. Okay. And th that never has downtime, does it? I never, wouldn't... ever, ever. Uh -huh. I mean, it's Google, so, you know. Yeah, very I wouldn't rarely. imagine it would. So, um, so while this is going, I'll show you some of the stuff that we've made, because 
the fun thing, you know, every 3D printer that you look at is just a pile of specs. Mm -hmm. And what we're really excited about this is not the specs, but what you can actually make. So to give you a little bit of a tour, we've got things like, we've got this English kit leather wallet that's got a century old map of Seattle engraved in it. Cool. It's actually made from a single seamless piece of leather. The Glowforge makes these holes with about a thousandth of an inch precision. So even somebody like me who can't sew can lace it up because you're just using a dull needle going in and out. Yeah. Cool. Uh, basic engraved MacBook. Um, nice. We actually nice. wound up accidentally on the front page of Reddit. Somebody took a picture of Settlers of Catan that we made for ourselves and posted it. And so we quickly called up the folks at Mayfair Games and said, hey, could we could we put settlers on our website? And they said, not unless you do water. So that's where, oh, the, cool. that's where the water tiles came from. Excellent. Those are gorgeous. That's beautiful. Thank you. One really neat thing, too, is this is not painted at all. These are just different woods. So you've got walnut. You've got uh, paduk, it's called. That's it's an amazing. African hardwood. Amazing. This is the, uh, let's see, wenge. And so it's just naturally this Whoa. color. It just has a coat of spray shellac. There's no sanding. Beautiful. These are purple heart. Um, so you get all this straight out. And here's another really cool thing. This was designed, like the actual illustrations were done by somebody who does not use Illustrator or Photoshop. She is, uh, her day job is she makes coloring books for grown-ups. So, so, so she drew them and then they were scanned into Adobe Illustrator and auto-traced, is that? No. Oh. They were up, scanned directly by the Glowforge, and the Glowforge can actually cut and engrave over the top of your drawing. So the reason that we prepare all our material with this white paper is that if you're an artist, you can go and draw directly on the paper, and then it will cut and engrave right over the top. So the Glowforge has a camera in it that... Two of them. So it's got one oh up God. here in the lid, which is... Uh, where you get, where the iPad gets its image from, that one right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. There's a second one that you can't see that's in the head, that's a macro lens that gives you precision down to a thousandth of an inch. So you can do a very rough pass with the, the head cam, but you can also send the, or sorry, with the lid camera, but you can take the close-up camera and scan it at really high detail. It also does cool stuff like if your piece is halfway done, you can interrupt it, take it out, put it back in, and it'll re restart. At least Dean tells me it will do that soon. We haven't quite finished that part yet. <laughs> but it can actually go see where it is and pick up where it left off. Um, you can do stuff like, this is nori for sushi. I saw that on your website. That's so cool. Yep. We've got um, some kind of bigger stuff. Like, this is a desktop set that's made of multiple interleaving pieces of plywood. Mm -hmm. And it's super strong. Like, it can hold a TV. And it's these fingers that slide together and then screws go in the back to hold it all together. And then you slap a piece of wood on top and glue it so you can't see the, the connections. That's super cool. One of my favorite things is this lamp that you see is made from recycled cardboard. So as you walk around it, you can or cannot see the, the bulb that's inside. And I don't know if you can see, but it's a globe of the world all the all the detail so you, this you is cut all it out a layer at a time and then glued it together exactly it's old amazon boxes and neat recycled um, we've done custom shoes from a picture of somebody's foot these are actually leather and urethane and then vibram in <laughs> vibram soles on the bottom cool and so you can take a picture of your foot and off you go um, got a picture frame that was designed for the picture it holds. Neat. So that's the London Underground. I love that. You know, and the usual things that lasers do well, like engraving glass, metal, um, leather. This is an old picture from Seattle many years ago. That's my mouse pad. Oh, man. And by the way, the design process for this was every Thursday we have Laser Thursday. We just all hang out and make stuff. And I had something to do, and I was in a hurry, so I was like, I'm going to grab this photo from the Library of Congress, I'm going to drop it on a piece of leather, and that's going to be my mouse pad. And it's not my mouse pad anymore, because somebody scooped it up for the sample kit, and now it, <laughs> I need to make another one. Um, another kind of fun thing is, this right here is a coaster 
And I don't know if you can see, but it's Padua shell. Mm -hmm. So just about any organic material can go in there. And this is actually the shell of an animal that's engraved, that's cut. Then it's walnut that's been engraved to make room for it. And then cork on the bottom. Oh, to man. Serve I love that. That's beautiful. So the, the base model, which is 1995, and that's the one we're using here, uh, goes for, um, oh, can handle material that's up to 12 inches by 20 inches. Mm -hmm. um, for uh, 4,000, you get the air filter and you also get a couple of extra bonuses. You get uh, a more powerful laser that runs a little faster, better optics. But my favorite feature is this, this unassuming door at the front. You get a, a slot in it, like a slot loading CD. Mm -hmm. And it means you can put in material that's as long as you want. And so oh, the Glowforge wow. starts doing the cut, and then you push it through, and it cuts a little more, and you push it through, and it cuts a little more. And, and it uh, sees it and realigns it and everything, so you don't have to worry about, like, in, in zeroing, zeroing it out again. Like exactly. This. So that actually lets you do stuff like furniture and really large-scale. Yeah. So how thick of a piece of... Uh, of like birch plywood could it cut through so quarter inch with no trouble mm -hmm. you can also do multiple passes or even flip it over and have the cameras re-register it so that you can get up to half an inch mm -hmm. that's great so that's that's really good there's an autofocus system inside the head that measures the height of the material and then moves the lens up and down as it traverses over the material so you can cut things that are bent or curved, and it also means that you can do multiple passes, changing the the, um, the height of the lens each time, so you can go deeper and deeper, which is something nobody's ever done with a laser before. That's so cool. Um, we completely enclosed all the lenses and mirrors, so you can see that right there is a little window mm -hmm. that the beam can go into that keeps everything from getting messy, because, you know, there's smoke. Yeah, sure. So I'm getting sooty. We've got about five minutes left on this, and then we'll get to put it together. So you, you sketch something with your pencil, and then you, you have to somehow tell it that you just want it to be etched versus cut all the way through, right? So yeah, it pops up, it shows you the bed, mm -hmm. and then you just have a magic wand tool, like Photoshop, mm -hmm. and you say, cut this, cut that, cut the other thing, and everything left, I want to engrave. Mm -hmm. And so usually it cuts out the outline and then engraves the middle. Okay, and, and then, um, so let, like that's, that's uh, your mouse pad with Seattle on it, is that different depths of engraving or? That one isn't, but it can absolutely do that. It can do 256 levels of engraving. And cool. it's really neat. If, it, if, it's, if you put in a material that you've got from us, where we know what the material is mm -hmm. by the barcode, mm -hmm. then we can actually preview exactly what the engraving will look like at various depths. Neat. So, like plywood, for example, will will look different if you just singe the outer layer versus if you uh, if you carve it off and can mm -hmm. see it in the center. Mm -hmm. um, it can change color pretty dramatically. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you can really preview and get a sense of what it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. um, it's also nice because we can identify a few common items like MacBooks and iPhones. Mm -hmm. So we can set the power settings for you automatically, so you don't accidentally cut a hole in your iPhone. <laughs> That's good. That would not be a good thing to do. Yeah, so we're almost done. It's now kicked over and is cutting on the, uh, let's see, it, and is cutting the uh, acrylic. So you can see it already finished all the walnut. Now it's doing the last few cuts on the acrylic. I think it's going to take the world by storm because yeah. I don't know of any other device where you can push a button and make stuff as varied as what you can do with this. Yeah. Um, I mean, even 3D printers, you can't grab something from Thingiverse and push a button. That might not be right for your machine. Mm -hmm. The slicer might fail. Um, you know, there's there's stuff on Thingiverse for everything from 3D printers to like um, vinyl cutters. Mm -hmm. And so the ability to just say, look, here's the thing, print and have it work. Um, I didn't mention this, but it's got an automatic height, uh, or sorry, thickness sensor so that you can use different thicknesses of materials and the pattern will still work. And that means you can scale something really big or really small with the same material, and you can change the material at the same size. What I love about that is I can cut something like that globe or like a picture frame, and I can cut it in one tenth size. And then once I get it, and I can do it in cardboard. And then once I get it right, I can make it huge and out of you know expensive walnut or something beautiful, and know it's going to come out exactly right. Yeah. All right, Dean's getting the last of the the, the white sticker off. 
Okay. And I will get started putting this together for you. Cool. Um, I, it's funny, I've had reporters who have not a technical bone in their body go and assemble these things, and it's, you know, they start out kind of scared, and then they're like, oh, this is easier than Ikea. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, actually, Dean, do you want to, uh, let me get you to hold the camera. Uh, yeah, I gotta there we go. Oh, peel that last one, yeah. So you can see that, you know, in a typical design, you've got tabs and slots, and knowing how thick the material is, and knowing what's a tab and what's a slot means that you can actually get those things to line up so that even if your, your plywood gets thicker or skinnier, you're able to make that work. So I'm just gonna slide these two together. I have like legendary shaky hands, but they're usually sufficient for this job. This one goes here. Who designed this? Uh, I, dabbling one night, a few nights ago, did it out of just like squares. Mm -hmm. And then I handed it to Tony, co-founder and chief product officer and said, could we make something pretty out of this? Uh -huh. And he started playing around with this shoji pattern. So, okay, we just put together the outside. I'm gonna flip it over. So it was a team effort, as many of these things are. I'm gonna put in the acrylic shades One thing you'll notice is I'm not using any glue or adhesives. This all fits tightly enough that it just slides together. And last but not least, put this in. And that's it. Nice. And you guys, congratulations. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. Great to see you. Yeah, great to see you guys too. Good luck with everything. Thanks so yeah, much. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks, I, I'm All blown right. away. Completely right. blown away. Bye, you guys.